infectious diseases, research, medicine, health. Welcome to Outbreak News Interviews. And now, broadcasting from the Outbreak News Skylar Studios in beautiful West Central Florida, here is your host, microbiologist and editor of OutbreakNewsToday.com, Robert Harriman. Well, joining me now to discuss prion diseases, including CJD, is Ryan Maddox, Ph.D., Dr. Maddox is an epidemiologist with the National Center for Emerging and Zoonotic Infectious Diseases at the CDC. Uh, Dr. Maddox coordinates nationwide surveillance on human prion diseases, including Crutzfield-Jakob disease. Crutzfield-Jakob disease is not classified as bacterial, viral, uh, parasitic, or fungal. Instead, it's caused by a prion. Dr. Maddox, can you explain what is a prion? Well, the word itself is derived from the phrase proteinaceous infectious particle. Uh, These are pathogenic agents. Uh, They're able to induce abnormal folding of normal cellular proteins called prion proteins. And it's this misfolding that actually leads to the brain damage. Okay, so I should pronounce it as prion? Yes, I've heard it both ways. Uh, Typically around here we call it prion. Very good. All right, now, how how does a protein become abnormal And how can something like a protein become transmissible? Well, in diseases like sporadic CJD, normal prion proteins transform into the abnormal prions through spontaneous misfolding, uh, due perhaps to a mutation in the prion protein gene. Uh, With diseases such as variant CJD, the abnormal prions actually may be ingested. Okay. And we're going to get into the details of these different types of CJD uh, in a few seconds. Now... Uh, prions cause fatal disease in humans and animals. And without getting too specific about CJD, can you talk briefly about the other prion diseases, including the animal ones? Sure, sure. Um, well, the human prion diseases include CJD, as you said, um, and also variant CJD. Um, some other ones include gerstmann strausler scheinker syndrome, or GSS, and fatal familial insomnia, FFI. And both of those are actually genetic prion diseases. Uh, Kuru is an interesting prion disease as well. That was found among the Foray tribe in Papua New Guinea, and it was actually attributed to ritualistic cannibalism. Um, among the animals, uh, we have the famous mad cow disease, uh, bovine spongiform encephalopathy, or BSE. Um, some other ones, chronic waste disease, or CWD, which has been found in cervid species like deer and elk. Uh, you have scrapie in sheep and goats. And there's a few others as well, like transmissible mink encephalopathy. Uh, BSE is the only known animal prion disease that's transmissible to humans, but we're keeping an eye on CWD, uh, which has been found in wild deer and elk in 19 states now. Yeah, I've uh, seen several recent stories of it in Ohio and Pennsylvania and some other places. Right. Um, now, getting back to crutzfeld jakob disease, uh, there's I see it um, described as classic and then also as variant CJD. What are the differences between the two? Uh, Yeah, there are definitely differences, and it's important to make that distinction that we are talking about two separate diseases. Uh, Classic CJD is the most common human prion disease. It was actually first identified back in the 1920s and may occur in one of three forms, sporadic, familial, or iatrogenic. Variant CJD is a relatively new disease. Uh, It was first described uh, just in 1996 in the United Kingdom and is believed to be caused by the consumption of products from cows with bovine spongiform encephalopathy. Or mad cow. Yes, exactly. And although their names are similar, there are definite differences between the two. Uh, For example, the median age of death for CJD is 68 years of age, while it's only 28 years for variant CJD. Uh, Another difference, illness duration is typically shorter for CJD. Uh, The majority of cases, unfortunately, die within one year, and actually almost half within just six months. Uh, For variant CJD, the median um, illness duration is usually around 14 months or so, give or take. Uh, The neuropathology of patients with VCJD is very distinguishable from classic CJD. Uh, notably, a handful of variant cases are believed to have been caused by receipt of blood from an asymptomatic donor who later desired, died of the disease. Uh, fortunately, we have no evidence that classic CJD may be spread in that way. Okay. Now, the case I was talking about in the introduction, uh, Speaker Lockett out in Utah, she was 46. 
Do we do, do we know? Do you know uh, what kind of CJD she had? Uh, without talking about specific cases, I will say that the majority of cases are sporadic CJD. Okay. Um, that is a younger age. Uh, about ten percent of cases, I'd say, a year are less than fifty-five years of age in this country. Oh, okay. Very good. Now. Looking at your uh, bio, I understand you do nationwide surveillance for the CDC on CJD. Got a little alphabet soup going on here. Um, and uh, so how many cases do we see annually in the United States? Well, the rough estimate is one case per million population per year, although recent efforts to match mortality data and neuropathology data suggest that that rate may be closer to 1.2. Uh, but if you apply that one per million estimate to the U.S. population, which is about 300 million, you'd expect about 300 cases a year. And so that's kind of our rough estimate. Obviously, there's some variability around that number, so we may see over 400 cases in some years. Yeah. Now, is is CJD or any of the other prion diseases, are they reportable to the CDC? Um, yes and no. Um a lot of states have it as a reportable disease. Mm-hmm. Um, the general rule is that if a state encounters a disease that's unusual uh, in some way, it would be reportable. So if they saw, for example, a case that looked like it might be variant CJD, which would be extremely unusual in the United States, that would be reportable to us. Okay. Now, because everybody has heard of mad cow disease, and we, you kind of touched on it briefly, um, can, if I go out and have some beef and that cow was tainted, do I have, is there a risk of me catching that prion? If the cow did in fact have mad cow disease or bovine spongiform encephalopathy, there would be some risk to you. Uh, the good news is that there does appear to be a substantial species barrier. Okay. Now, millions of people were potentially exposed to beef from cattle with the disease, uh, but to date, there's only been 229 cases of variant CJD worldwide. So, obviously, there's something that's protecting most of those people. Right, and, and that, much, much of that was in Europe, am I right? Exactly. Yeah. Most of those cases are actually in the United Kingdom. Uh, there have been four in this country that were likely exposed elsewhere. Um, that being said, I, could, I will go ahead and say that more exposed cases could still occur. You know, we have a very long incubation period with prion diseases in general. And you could also possibly see another wave of cases as a result of secondary transmission. Uh, for example, the uh, possibility of blood transmission that I mentioned earlier. Now, now, is there something about prions that make them very, very resistant to, say, like heat and stuff? Because I remember in 2014, I think it was in New Hampshire, they had an outbreak due to neurosurgeries and the equipment was not being sterilized to the point where prions would be killed. Is there? Yes, they're, they're, they're very um, difficult to destroy. Uh, they, they do require more stringent sterilization procedures, and we have those outlined on our website um, for hospitals to take advantage of. And, and so we do occasionally see situations as occurred, uh, like the one you mentioned, where a procedure is performed, uh, the appropriate sterilization may not have been done, and so there's a question about patient notification, there's a patient about what to do with the instruments, and so on. Sure. Now, this is uh, 100% fatal. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. So, is there anything that's going on at the CDC or in pharmaceuticals or where there's treatments being developed? Uh, Is there diagnostic test kits that are helping to, you know, detect it earlier or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, we still can't confirm the diagnosis without brain analysis at this point. That's the bad news. The good news is that there is a lot of research that's going on. Uh, There is a more accurate... test out there now. The, the RT quick test is a test of cerebrospinal fluid. Um, that's a good example of a more recent test that's been shown to have very high specificity in uh, diagnosing sporadic CJD. So, so there is a lot of work going on and there is hope on the horizon that we're going to be able to diagnose these diseases uh, quicker and more accurately in the future. Excellent. And lastly, uh, my last question for you, Dr. Maddox, is uh, somebody emailed me uh, recently, and they were pointing me to a website called TSE um, Research Center. And on the side, there's a physician, I believe, who points to 
a bacterium called spiroplasms as the cause of CJD. Um, true, false? What do you know about that? Well, I mean, the bottom line is I'd say that most researchers believe prions to be the infectious agent, okay. but there are some that do not, and they offer alternative theories. And uh, Dr. Bastian, whose work is featured on that particular site, would fall into that category. Okay. Well, thanks. Thank you, Dr. Max, for all your time and expertise. I appreciate it. No problem. Thank you. Okay.